Hey, it's Larry Lursey. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to take a look at Topaz Studio 2. Now, I've been using Topaz's individual plugins for quite a while now, and I've always enjoyed them, but Studio 2 is basically a collection of a whole bunch of their plugins all under one roof. So, instead of going into one, doing it, going into another one, doing all these different individual plugins, we're kind of going into one software and having access to all these different tools. So, it's going to be kind of interesting to see how it works. If you'd like to follow along with what we're doing, there's a link in the description where you can download a free trial from Topaz and use your own images and follow along with what I'm doing. And by the way, at the end of the video, I'm going to tell you how you can get a discount on it if you'd like to purchase it. It's going to be really interesting. I think you're going to enjoy it. So without any further ado, let's go. Okay, here we are in Photoshop and we're going to look at Topaz Studio 2. We are going to basically run it through the paces and give you an overview of what it does. And it does a lot of different things. If you don't already have a copy, there is a link in the description where you can go to Topaz's website and download a free trial. Try it out with your own images. So, let's jump right in. Before we do, one last thing is make sure that you are not working on this background layer. You want to drag this down to here and make a copy of it so that we're doing topaz here on this top and we'll go ahead and double click call it topaz that way if we don't decide later we don't like what we did to it we can just turn this off and go back to our original or maybe we want to fade the effect or whatever but it's just better to work on a duplicate copy of the layer if you try to open up topaz with just the background it's going to give you a warning and say are you sure you want to do that because uh because of what we just talked about so we've got a copy of our layer here we're going to go up to filter Topaz Studio 2, and here we are. Now you're going to see this at startup. You can click down here to turn it off, but basically it's kind of a little mini tutorial that will run you through some of the things that it does to kind of get you started. And so again, you can turn that off. You don't want to see it anymore, but um, it's kind of a nice place to start. That's kind of how I figured out what <laughs> where I was supposed to start with this because it's a little overwhelming at first. You know, when you get in here, you've got um, your views up here. This is how you're looking at them side by side with a sliding split, um, making it fit in the screen. So these are basically ways that you're viewing your image here. This is a zoom. We can get in, look at detail, things like that. But we're going to leave it right about there for now. So over here is kind of the meat of what we are going to work on. You've got add filters and add look. Now what look is, think of look as kind of like a preset. Look is, once you do a whole bunch of filters to something, that creates a look. So a look is basically just a bunch of filters all applied at the same time, if that makes sense. Another familiar thing, if you're used to Photoshop, you will see over here, is we're going to start having layers. And this is our base right here, it just says Photoshop image. This is going to be like, kind of like, think of it as your layers palette that you would have in Photoshop. As we start adding these effects on top, they're going to place them on top of our layer, as you'll see here in a second. So, let's go ahead and jump in and take a look at filters. They're grouped into things. You've got Essentials, Creative, and Stylistic down here. Now, one thing that you will notice, and it's a question I get a lot on the channel about Topaz, is the difference in their products. There's a lot of overlap. You know, you will see noise reduction here, but they've also got a standalone um, noise reduction software. And so you're going to see some overlap of different effects and things. And generally, the ones that are going to be in here are going to be, you know, scaled down versions of what you would have in the one that is just focusing on that specific effect whether that is reducing noise or sharpening or, or what have you. You're going to have a lot of those in these that are also their own product. So if you decide that uh, you like the noise reduction and you want to really go in depth looking at noise reduction, there is a uh, separate software for that. So to me, that's one of the nice things about Studio 2 is it's kind of giving you a whole bunch of these different effects all in one place. So what we'll do here is we'll go through and there is a ton of these, um, and I'm going to have to basically make some separate tutorials on some of these different filters because there's just too many to go over in one video, but we'll hit on a bunch of them. They're placed here alphabetically, and I usually try to start with basic adjustment. 
Now, when you pull up basic adjustment, you have these options right here. You'll see this opacity. This is basically, if we look up here, we've got an adjustment layer on top of our basic image. And here's your opacity to adjust the opacity of that. We've got an auto white balance we can try. Um, doesn't do a whole lot on this one because I think we're pretty good on our, our white balance. And a lot of these you're going to be very familiar with. You know, exposure. Let's go ahead and bring the exposure. Um, let's go maybe just a tiny bit down like that. Um, clarity works nicely. Uh, your shadow, highlight, exposure. Um, highlight, you know, we've got a little bit of a hot spot in here. Maybe let's uh, tweak that a tiny bit. You've got your white level, black level, saturation. I think we could use a little more saturation on this. You can shift your temperature here if you want to do that, but I'm pretty happy. Um, what you can do over here is there's two different ways. Well, there's a whole bunch of different ways to see where you were before. One is to go up here to the uh, this little disable effect, and you can go back and forth between there's the normal. That's what we've done. You can also come out here and just kind of grab it by holding down the mouse, and it goes back to the original and the effect. Third way that we can look at it is to come up here to view. Um, I like to use this split horizontal and basically this slider allows you to see before and after. So you've got a whole bunch of different ways of how you can view this image as you're working on it. All right, let's add another filter. Let's go ahead and do a curves. If you use Photoshop, you are familiar with curves pretty cut and dry. Um, we'll just pick some points here, move them up, bring this part down a little bit. I think that looks pretty nice there. Pretty cut and dry. Uh, let's add another filter. You'll notice, by the way, that there's hearts out here. If you go ahead and choose those, and we'll do it as we go along here, it will make these your favorites. So if you've got certain ones that you're always using, you can come back and uh, just select your favorites. All right, precision contrast is a cool one. And what this does is you get these different contrast settings here. Again, you'll notice we've made a precision contrast layer at the top. So we've got precision contrast sitting on top of curves, basic adjustments, and then there's our image. So this is our layers palette once again. So we'll come down here looking at these different contrast uh, detail settings and what I do is basically try and just move them around and decide what kind of a look you like best. These are looking, this is looking in the low contrast areas and specifically adding contrast to them. You can see it's really easy to go too far. And these are your high contrast areas, which are already going to be a little troublesome in this image. Um, I think that's pretty good. Your lighting here, you know, you've got your, your shadows. And I kind of like about where we were before, honestly. Uh, your saturation, we've already kind of played with that. Sometimes this vibrance will give it a little more snap. I think that's looking pretty good. And we'll do, let's do one more. Let's do, um, let's do a vignette. So you get your vignette, your strength, how dark it is, way too dark. I like to get it where you can just kind of barely see it. How big it is, move that out. And let's this might be one we really want to look before and after on. Okay, I think that's a little too much, so what I'm going to do is just bring the opacity down a tiny bit on it. And let's turn it off and on. Yeah, I think that's I think that will work. Uh, one thing you will notice is if you do do the grabbing method, it's taking away all the effects and showing you the original. So if you only want to see it without the vignette, you need to use the eye. But I think that's pretty good. I like that little bit of a vignette on it. So here's a cool thing about this whole setup is once we've got all this how we like it, what we can do is this is basically a look. And you can come up here to save look. And let's call this my cool adjustment. I don't know what to call it. It's a, you know, this is this is what I do to photos. Whatever. Hit OK. Now, when we go into looks, 
we have the ability of pulling up this exact same sequence and doing it to the next image, which is kind of cool. So we're happy with this. We're going to go up here, hit accept, and that will take us back into Photoshop. And here we are. The top layer is Topaz having done its work. The bottom is our original image. We'll take a look at the before and after. I think that's pretty cool. One thing that I would suggest doing is going ahead and renaming this Topaz to, uh, what did we call it? My cool look? Whatever we called it. <laughs> so that, um, you know, you come back six months later and you go, oh, I like what I did to that image. And you can't remember which of your looks, you know, by then you've created a hundred different looks. Here, you can go right to that look and you will remember what it was called. So that's just kind of a little tip for helping you remember what you've done to this image. Because at least for me, what happens a lot of the times is I do all this work and get this how I like it. And then I later decide on a different image from the same shoot, but a slightly different angle. And then I have to try to recreate and get this look in it, and it's a nightmare. So there we go. There's a before and after on this image. Kind of give you an idea of the basics, and we'll pull up another image. By the way, if anybody knows what this location is, uh, leave it in the comments and let me know. Be a little challenge. See if you can identify it. So let's pull up a second image here. Just a little uh, alleyway here. Pretty neutral, a little splash of color in the middle. So this will be kind of an interesting one to work on. I uh, already made a copy here. And we'll come up here to uh, Filter, to Best Studio 2. Close this out. One of the things that we can do right off the bat is take a look at what we did to that last one, adding a look. And we'll go into looks a little more deeply in, uh, in a future tutorial because it's kind of its whole, whole different animal, all these things you can do here. But what we will do for now is change the category to My Looks. And here we have My Cool Adjustment that we just worked on. I can click on it once and it shows us. It actually looks pretty nice. But one thing we can do is we say, I like this, but there's something about it I don't like. We can go ahead and hit Apply. And what that does is brings in all of our familiar layers right here on top. And if I say, I like this, but I think it needs uh, more saturation or whatever, I can bring up this basic adjustment, come here to saturation, boost it a little bit. I can even come in and say, I think the shadows need to open up a little bit, not that far, something like that can tweak it to get it exactly how I want it. Then I can either save it again and give it a slightly different name or uh, just go with it like this. I get them all set up how I like them. I can even add another filter if I decide I want to add um, any of these things. Texture is a really cool one. Uh, we'll take a look at that real quick. Where you basically get all these textures here and look at them as overlays. One of the things I like to do before I even start looking at these is set the mode to soft light and I think that generally makes the textures blend a little better and then start going through that's kind of a cool look that's really interesting there let's see the before and after I kinda like that it's giving us some texture through here and it's also kinda shifting the color a little bit it's an interesting look alright so we're happy with that we could call this uh, we again save this look call it Awesome texture, I don't know. Just like that, now we can come back and recreate this look with another image if we want. We go ahead, if we're happy, and hit accept. And there you go. It's on its own layer, so if you decide, you know what, I like that, but it's a little too much, just dial down the opacity a little bit until you're happy with it. But you can see it really is a powerful tool and so many of those little areas there can be fine-tuned and used to shift this image around in ways that you end up completely different from where you were. And you can go really in-depth with each little effect on there and really create some nice looks. So what did you think about Studio 2? From my standpoint, I think it really is a great product. Considering the price, 
it's not too terribly expensive for basically a whole bunch of different plugins that you're getting. I love the fact that it gives me this in-depth toolbox that does everything from repairing images to enhancing images to all the way going to just crazy creative places with the images. So it's very versatile and I think it works really well for what it's supposed to do. If you try the trial, decide you like it, you can use the coupon code LARRYPHOTO and that'll actually give you 15% off, which makes a good deal into an even better deal. So hopefully that will help. I'm also going to do a series of videos on Studio 2 because I think it's just too much to get into in one or even two videos. So we're going to jump into some more advanced things like how to make it work better in your workflow, how to get even more control out of the plugins, things like that. It's going to be interesting if you haven't already done so. Please take a second to subscribe to the channel and click the little bell so you'll know as these new videos come out you can keep up with us. By the way, let me know in the comments what you thought about Studio 2 and what your favorite effect is in it. So I'll be curious to hear the feedback on this. But that's all we have for this week, and I will talk to you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.